All right, guys, thanks for being on um, this segment. I have, and you guys all know him, but integrity partner, Andrew Taylor on with me. Um, I've obviously talked about the relationship Andrew and I have and how much he's taught me. And so I appreciate you getting on, dude. Um, I wanted you to, we're going to go a couple of different places today while we have you for the next 10, 15 minutes, but I wanted you, if you can give some updates on ILC, you know, some of the changes that have been made and some of the things you're doing with the integrity team to, you know, help the agent experience and, and help agents have success that are buying leads out of there. You got it, man. Uh, thanks for having me. First, I want to say uh, it's an honor to be on Zach. I consider you a good friend and somebody who is, I would say probably you're, you're developing faster than anyone in the company when it comes to business and helping people, helping agents, putting agents first. Um, we talk a lot and you guys might not know this, but he's constantly up at night looking for things to make agents um, situations better, make the training better. Uh, and it's cool to work with people who care, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I started at 18 years old and I followed people that made a lot of money. And then as I got further into business, I started following people who first were making a big impact in people's lives and, and then money being the secondary thing. And I consider Zach someone who's doing that. Um, so appreciate being in business with you, dude. Um, I'm going to talk about leads, but there's some new people on here. There's some seasoned people on here. So I want to go back to when I was brand new. I'm 34 now. I uh, tell everybody that I've quit this business a hundred plus times. And then the next day I started again because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to be a quitter at, at the time I did. And then the next day I was like, I'm going to give it one more chance. And mm -hmm. I share that because everybody's at a different place in their life. So some people are emotionally stronger. Some people are more confident. Some people have had some things happen to them in their lives where they're like, could this be good? My track record has not been good. It could be unfortunate things in many different ways. Um, so I always like to share where I was when I started, which was uh, working at the grocery store. I had this big desire because I grew up with a single mom my dad had died when I was 10 and I wanted to like live a different life than watching my mom worry about paying bills, working multiple jobs, being stressed to send us to camp or maybe not letting us go to like a simple soccer camp or something like that, or just being stressed out about it. So I always had this desire to do that. Um, I was 18 working at the grocery store and someone had said, uh, you know, do you want to get your insurance license? And I was like, how much do you make per sale? And they said, you can make around 500 bucks a sale. And I was making like 200 bucks, 250 a week at the grocery store. Um, so I was like, if I could make one sale a month, it would be like two weeks at the grocery store. And then I was shy and I didn't have a lot of confidence. So Someone said I could invest in leads. And I was like, ooh, I don't have to talk to friends and family. So I can go call leads. But this is what I want to share with you guys. Uh, and it's funny, dude, because at, at the grocery store, somebody gave me this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which mm -hmm. said, basically, don't buy nice stuff, buy things that will pay you forever. So I would save my money and I was trying to figure out how to buy nice stuff. But it would take me probably 200 years to buy an asset at the grocery store, saving, you know, eight bucks an hour, what I was making. So I was very interested in selling, but I couldn't wrap my mind around spending money on leads. So the first like eight weeks in business, I was calling the same leads over and over and over and over. Someone was laughing because my friend was like, dude, there's ketchup and mustard stains on your leads. Cause I would print them out. Cause I wanted them tangible. And um, I'm like, dude, that's because I'm calling the same ones for like eight weeks. And, but this is what's crazy. My budget was $50 a week. So 50 bucks a week. And I was going insane. And it wasn't until someone goes, dude, what do you have to lose if you get more leads and it doesn't work? And I'm like, 
nothing really. I'd be in the same position I'm in now. So I upped that to $500 a week. But what that did for me is it made me work. And I, I learned to do this thing where I would commit to something and then it would force me to work. So mm -hmm. when I upped that, my, it was my, it was an auto lead order. Um, I start, some weeks would be a dog fight and some weeks would be great. And you, those of you who sell know this, this, this business can drive you crazy. Cause some weeks it's like, this doesn't work anymore. And some weeks it's like, this is so good. I'm the man. I'm going to go buy a new car. This money's going to be coming in like this, this easy forever. I'm going to go to Disneyland. And then the next week you get your butt kicked. Um, so what I learned is in order to kind of stabilize everything, getting a consistent lead flow helped me. And a lot of people have different opinions on this, but what worked for me was a little bit of different types of leads. So there could be a little bit of, you know, direct mail, a little bit of internet, a little bit of social media, a little bit of whatever, but having a blend always worked for me. And sometimes some of them work. And the, the phrase I came up with is nothing works all the time, but everything works a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I always like that healthy blend. Now, with that being said, um, I, about three months ago, I started working with Integrity's lead center on it and trying to help them from an agent perspective, increase quality in leads. What would agents like? Uh, how can we make sure that as we grow and we recruit that we can have a good um, a good situation for agents, even though you still have to work? We all know that on this call, but how do we get more pickups? How do we get more people that are warmed up? How do we get, how, what should we do in all these different scenarios? So I wanted to share some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, one of them is we have integrations with Ringy and phone burner coming soon, which is going to be super helpful because any lead you get that's TCPA compliant that you can automatically you know, text, schedule appointments with, the, the quality of that lead goes up because they're getting contacted faster. So yesterday, I had my ringy, I loaded my leads into ringy. I had somebody call, uh, text me back, say, I want to spend under $200 a month. Zach, I was on the phone with you. I said, I got to call this client. We wrote them for $198 a month. She had a medical issue a year ago and she lost her insurance. And, um, so she was like, I was spending 200. I need to spend under 200 and I need to get a policy. I was paying it for years and I lost it because I was in the hospital and my kids weren't paying my bills. They didn't know about this bill to pay. So uh, using that will be huge. They're going to be, real, they're going to be announcing that shortly here. Um, that'll be a great tool. Um, but some of the other developments, and these are some of the things that we found out that a lot of people don't know about. This is what is in there now live. One of them are real-time lead campaigns. The f and the the thing we've noticed is the faster you call somebody when they're interested, the better odds of you contacting them, the contact rate goes up like 50%. So mm -hmm. if I fill something out online, so I recently filled out like a sleep number inquiry on online because I was thinking, oh, I want a new bed because my back was hurting. Two days later, the guy calls me. I had take some IV, taken some ibuprofen, stretched. My back wasn't hurting. I was like, dude, I don't need to spend 10 grand, and 10 grand on a new bed right now. Now, when people fill things out, usually something happens. So it could be a medical scare. It can be a thought of a scare of what happens to their family if something happens to them. It can be a friend. Something happens to a friend. It can be all of these different things. So... If you, if you set up real-time campaigns, then the contact rate goes up because you're getting the lead immediately as it comes out, as the person fills it out. And what people don't know is for, uh, I believe it's nine bucks, people get that exclusive lead and it is not resold. And so that's a lead that 
integrity doesn't have to pay up front for because you're doing these campaigns. So once you get it, that lead is never resold. Um, the uh, So that's a, a pretty cool thing. There also is a live transfer feature in there where you can toggle on and off when you're in front of your computer when you want to receive live transfers. The biggest thing that people are having issues with on that is they're not paying attention to the phone number that's calling them for the live transfer because they think it might be spam or something. So they're not answering. So if you guys do do that, make sure you take note on the number that it shows up it's going to call from when you're expecting live transfers. Uh, the next thing that's super cool is uh, social media mortgage leads. So everybody loves mortgage protection leads. Now, if you go to ILC, there's a social media mortgage tab. They're $27 and they just flow in all day long. Um, usually they go pretty fast. So you want to check throughout the day a couple different times. Like I checked earlier, there was like 90 available. You can buy them statewide. So you can go, I want these five states. This is a great tool for telesales. We had a Laundra Crenshaw test these and she wrote around 40K her first month testing these leads. Um, so that's a great lead type. They also have IUL and um, veteran leads and also regular Facebook leads. So this is just, the goal here is a higher quality lead with somebody watching a video and a higher contact rate. Um, we've recently added a ton of filters and got rid of, I don't know, a dozen lead vendors because Integrity has a software now that can take a video image of the lead and we can see if there's somebody was saying you can win a sweepstakes or a gift card or anything like that. So they've been cleaning up a lot of stuff like that. And that's on the uh, regular internet lead side. So people are going to see a higher quality there um, automatically. Uh, they have a save and I, this is what it's called, uh, set, set and save feature launching in like two weeks. And what that is, is let's say you want um, five ethos leads and five beneficiary leads and five social media mortgage leads and seven internet life leads. If you automate that every week, it'll automatically pull from inventory for you and you save, I believe it's 20% on your lead bill. So it's a pretty cool that's feature. Dope. Yeah. Because yeah. that's like what you said about automating your lead flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you have to think too much and, and you're just randomly picking out your lead source every week, it's almost like you're a little too late. Yeah. When I was new and Monday was the day I start calling, I didn't know what I was calling until like noon. Because yeah. I'm like, what should I buy? What should I do? What's available? What's this? What's that? We had a new agent recently, and this is the power of dial team. So like on our day shop, we had a new agent. She's like, I don't know what, I don't know what leads to get. I want to start today. We had her get 10 beneficiary leads, 10 um, ethos and 10 ethos leads. And she's calling on dial team on zoom dials. And um, she gets somebody on the phone. Uncle Jimmy actually took over and closed it for her because she was totally messing it up because she was brand new, but it was 2,800 AP. Uh, the beneficiary leads we've liked a lot because you can say the name of the beneficiary uh, so that you're going, hey, Billy, it says here that your uh, daughter Susanna would be the beneficiary if something happened to you. And that's just information that a telemarketer doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Is it perfect? No. Um, but if it's not, all you have to do is request um, lead credit on it. And they've been real good. Now, it's important for you to request lead credit because it also helps. And this is what I've learned. It helps Integrity track good and bad traffic. So the more data they get on a lead credit, like why are, why is this traffic source providing wrong numbers? Then they can eliminate it and continue to make it better. But I always tell people who, you're going to get 20%, 30% of someone that says, you know, 
they they didn't fill it out. It was the wrong number or whatever. And you can put that in and you can request credit for it. And the other thing I'm going to talk about, which this isn't a important talk uh, topic for me. And I like now that I'm in it and I understand everything, I want to share it. So in, in Lead Center, every description shares it, you know, how the lead works. And I've always had this argument with mortgage protection leads and the cost of mortgage protection leads keep going up and up and up and up and up because mail keeps going up, but people love mortgage protection leads. Um, so the argument is this, should we make a lead exclusive for life for somebody or should that lead be resold and the lead can be cheaper and it will also give a new agent a chance to get leads cheaper if the lead isn't sold. And my vote has always been get the lead cheaper and then new agents can have a chance also to have a lead if it wasn't closed. Mm -hmm. And the problem though was people wouldn't disposition if they sold a lead or not because it's just extra yeah. work. So somebody's lead could be sold that they sold. And so Integrity did this huge initiative to link every carrier from all their business units to ILC. So Zach, if you get a if you buy a lead and it's for um you know Billy and you sell it, the carrier feed is going to automatically remove that lead from ILC so nobody else can call it. And that's been a huge feature. Yeah, yeah. In order to keep that going. Um, but I always tell this story of of this dude named Jessis Jackson when people are like, you know, when people argue with me on this topic, I run this appointment, I get to the dude's house. His name is Justice Jackson. He's super mean. He has no shirt off. He's like six eight. And I'm in a bad mood because I had no sales all day. Mm -hmm. and dude like throws me out of the house. I send a copy of the lead to my friend and I say, hey, if you sell this, I'll deem you the greatest salesperson in the world. And I forgot about it. The next day, my friend sends me a picture with Justice Jackson and a check in his hand. And I'm like, bro, what did you do? And he goes, I just said, dude, you, you did you play in the NFL or something? with a huge smile on my face and he lit up and, and we had a great appointment. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is this, everybody can be closed, but it could be at a different time. It could be you. It could be them. It could be timing. So if I get a new lead and they say, you know, see you later. So let's use my mom as an example. So yesterday my neighbor called me, which was weird and goes, Hey, the ambulance is at your mom's house and the fire truck. And I'm like, dude. And I'm thinking like, we've had some crazy stuff happen in my family. So my mind immediately went to, you know, what happened to my mom and freaked me out. And she was not answering the phone. And then I finally get a hold of someone else on the street. And they're like, your mom had a friend over and she had a heart attack. Okay. So the ambulance came and got her, or she thought she was having a heart attack took her to the hospital and that person could have filled out a lead a month ago and they were too busy. If somebody called them right now, cause I called them to, I know the person who it was, my mom's good friend. And if somebody called them right now, they would take their call. Yeah. So the, this concept of re repeat tries is, a huge benefit to building an agency, but it's also a huge benefit to helping people. So I do want to go over the aging rules because I think that a lot of people don't know some of these changes that have been made, but just mm -hmm. so people know. So Dude, real quick before you do that, I was, I, I, um, I used to think that my lead should never be resold. And I used to only buy the leads that were not resold. And then I always ran business when we were doing it in person in Grand Junction, where like I grew up at and it's a small town and my family's lived for a long time. 
And I still sold like everyone that I came across there for the most part. Right. And because like dude, a lot of people, my dad was like a lot of people's doctors that I saw because there's a lot of final expense and mortgage protection. And, you know, he, my dad's great. He has a great reputation. So I was like, I sell everyone here. And I remember the one time this agent, Brittany Jarrett, who still is a hall of fame producer every year for the last three years in a row, she was like, do you have any extra leads? So I was like, oh, sure. I gave her like five that I didn't sell. And I was, I was thinking in my head, I'm like, there's no chance. Like if I didn't sell it, she's not going to sell it. Right, Drew. And then she sent me a picture like of the, of four of the people she, so she sold four out of the five people I didn't sell for like $12,000 in premium. And I was, and it taught me two things. I was like, like you said, a, the timing could be wrong and B, I wasn't as good as I thought I wasn't selling. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought I was like, I'm not. And then the same thing happened later. I remember I used to give Wiley all my old leads. Cause I was like, Oh, he, he just needs some leads. He's probably not going to sell these, but maybe he'll get lucky. And he would sell most of them, like half of them. And I was like, God, sometimes it's bad timing. And sometimes you're just not a good fit for people. And then sometimes I realize, like, maybe I'm just good because I buy enough leads and I'm not that good at sales. And so that's what it taught me. And it, that totally changed my mindset a couple of years ago because I used to be like, I only want these to be my leads forever. And these guys cleaned up on them. And so I understand the value of it now, but I got to see it firsthand multiple times. Yeah, that's that's huge, man. <laughs> Um, dude, and those leads helped me make my career the dollar, two yeah. dollar, three dollar. Like, I mean, I probably wouldn't be here without those opportunities. I um, wouldn't either. Yeah. All right. So the aging rules in ILC. So if someone buys a lead in any category, okay, besides the real-time campaigns, which are just permanently not resold. But let's say you buy a diamond life lead. That lead is yours for 30 days. And then if you don't sell it, if it doesn't come up as a sale on the back end from the carriers, then that lead would go for sale again after 30 days. And I'm always like, 30 days should be a good amount of time yeah. to... But what it does is it allows a lower cost. So um, that's, and I, I just like people to know that, like that is the way it works on most of those categories. And it does tell you in the descriptions, if you guys look at them. Um, now, the funny thing is this, Zach, there's a company, I'm not going to mention their name. They sold leads for, I don't know, years and years and years. And they were always exclusive, right? So they have like 400 and something thousand mortgage protection leads and they're getting ready to upload all of them into ILC as age leads wow. because the mortgage business slowed down. So their business isn't doing good. Um, but there's about 400,000 leads going into ILC any day. They're just working out all the mapping. Um, and they're, the type is mortgage protection call-ins. And you got mortgage protection call in completes and you have mortgage protection call in incompletes. So, and what I've found is these are good, these leads are good leads, really good leads mm -hmm. that come with a lot of information. Um, so, I also say that to say what I've seen is in the lead world, a lot of people say that, but I've never actually seen something really be exclusive, anyways. I haven't yeah. seen it. Um, yeah, man. And then there's a bunch of other things, but I don't want to get into them because they're not done yet, but the roadmap looks really cool. Uh, I always say this too, Zach, like it's important to not fall in love with one lead type. Mm -hmm. I had a manager in 2018, tell people to only work Facebook leads. And then the election came out and the pricing like went crazy. So his whole team was like, well, you told me not to work any other lead type ever. So now we feel like we're out of business. Yeah. So I've always thought it was important to um, have a healthy blend of things and also don't count anything out because things can change over time, you know? And then just remember, like, dude, these are people, man. 
at the end of the day, these are people and all people have similar worries. And then number one is death. Yeah. And we're selling, you know, we're selling peace of mind that their family, their loved ones are taken care of. And that makes this job very fulfilling. It also makes dialing a lot easier. It does, right? Because it's everyone's a family you need to protect and take care of. And that's, you know, to kind of loop back to what we talked about at the very beginning is if you have enough leads, then you don't have commission breadth and you don't need to make every single sale, right? So no matter how high the lead quality is, I always measured it based on amount spent. And my target was to spend 1500 a week. Everyone's is different. Everyone's results from that would be different. But my goal was to always get up to that. And sometimes it'd be a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, but I think a lot of people, here's one, one thing, Andrew, I could, we can end with this or love to hear your comment on it, but I think it's equally as risky to spend. I think it's less, I think it's more risky to spend $300 a week on leads than it would be to spend a thousand because either way, one sale is basically going to break you even on the leads. Right. But if you spend 300 or a thousand, you have three times as many chances on the thousand in leads as you do on the 300. Right. So it's actually riskier because you have to say they're, you know, say they're 10 bucks a lead each, right? You have 30 leads. You got to close, you know, three out of those 30 to be profitable for the week and make a couple thousand dollars for the week. But if you get a hundred leads, then you only have to sell three out of a hundred and you still net two grand for the week. Right. Mm -hmm. So people sometimes think it's risky to spend more on leads, but it's actually way riskier. If you think about it just logically and not are not tied to the money, it's way riskier to spend less on leads. And that's how I, that's how I had to convince myself of, of viewing it. No, for sure. It is. And it's also way less stressful because you have more at bats. You have more people yeah. to talk to. You have more yeses and more nos. Um, but yeah. And dude, this business isn't for everybody. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But what I always tell people is find out fast. If it's not for you, yeah. don't find out slow, not in a year or two years, find out fast. And the only way to do that is to get uncomfortable um, and go all in, man. No doubt. Well, hey, dude, thank you. Appreciate everything you're doing to help the agent's experience. And uh, I think thank you for everything you do for the company, my man. You too. See you guys.